name is uh, Ian Lebay. I am um, I am French. Uh, uh, I've been living uh, in Korea since uh, 1996, and uh, uh, currently I'm a well. Currently, I've been a, a math teacher for more than 20 years in a French uh, in, in a French international school. Uh, yeah. And also, I like uh, I like doing magic, and uh, well, I like a lot of doing a lot of things. I have a lot of uh, hobbies. Right. Good morning, sir. My name is Jessica, an eighth grader from JPHS School, Ilavaram. I am so glad to interact with you. Here, I would like to share a little information. India has made significant contributions in the evolution. Of mathematics, Aryabhatta, Brahmagupta, and Bhaskaratu are some of the famous mathematicians from ancient India. In this context, I would like to ask you a question. My question is What is your perception towards Korean students in learning math? Okay. Um... As, I, as I told you, I. Um... Yeah, students are not typically Korean students. Uh, m lots of them are Korean from Korean background, but they they don't go to a normal Korean school. Uh, Korean uh, Korean students in Korea uh, mostly they, um, and uh, in uh, in France in France we have a tendency to. Uh, try to emphasize the, the 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 proof. So we have a tendency to to ask always why. Uh, and uh, yes, in sir. Korea, uh, the 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 emphasis is um, mostly on the 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 answer, the result. So it's a little bit more what. So if you if you see um, a test uh, from a French curriculum, you will see that you have uh, I don't know prove that uh, this length is uh, seven centimeter. And in uh, Korean uh, tests, you will have uh, this is the length and what is the what is the length and you're going to have um, some checkbox with a six, seven, eight and nine centimeters and the students will have just to check the answer. So it's very different because uh, in the French system, we actually give the answer, but you are, the student has to show how to get to the answer. Wow, that's good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. My name is Madhavi. I am an eighth grader from Japi H School Ilvaram. I would like to share a little information. Life in India is unlike anywhere else. While the hugely crowded cities can make the country a little daunting for first for first visitors, the hustle and noise are normal aspects of day-to-day -day life in this connection. Now, I would like to take it an opportunity to ask you a question. Can I ask, sir? Of course. What is life like in South Korea? Oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, compared to, to France, um, uh, life in, uh, in Korea is very, I would say, fast-paced. Everything is going very, very fast. And um, compared to France, um, uh, I wouldn't I would say people care a little bit less about quality of life. Um, French people often complain that in Korea, everything is very, very noisy. However, um, it's a very, very safe country. Uh, with uh, not a lot of crime, and uh, you can go out anywhere at any time of the of in the night, and even if somebody walks behind you, you you won't even look back because there's no threat. You don't live in in any kind of fear. So it's a very safe country, and you feel very relaxed living living in Korea compared to to France, for instance, where when it's very late at night and somebody's behind you, you're gonna have to check. To make sure that it's safe, so um, and I'm not saying that uh, France is a very dangerous country, but the um, the feeling in Korea is uh yeah it's very very relaxed. Though Korea is a very very noisy country. So you have thank you, sir. 
you have just told that the, the life in South Korea is so safe. Is it because of the laws that are being implemented strictly in South Korea? Uh, so in order to reduce the crime rate uh, all time low? Uh, actually, I, I, I think that the laws are mostly uh, the same everywhere. You know, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't kill. So I don't think it's uh, it's about the laws. I think it's... Uh, it's very cultural. Um, it's uh, in Eastern Asia, you know, you have the 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 the, the cultural um, notion of shame, and you bring shame to yourself and to your family. So, being a thief is very shameful, and you really, really be out of the society. in In France, being st stealing something is sometimes it's a joke. It's a little, so it's a little bit like. Um, you know, going against the authority and it's kind of national sport. Uh, whereas in in Korea, uh, stealing is really, really something very shameful. So I'm not saying there are there aren't any thieves in Korea, for instance, but it's uh, way way less than uh, you can uh, find in Western countries. Sir. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm I'm great. I'm having a great time. This is Akash Kumar, an Indian reader from JPHS Ilavaram. I am so excited to interact with you. Now I would like to share little information. Coding cultivates analytical skills, enhances critical thinking, and fosters adaptability skills that are highly transferable to various job roles. Now I would like to ask you a question, sir. Can I? My question is, what is the importance of coding in the first in the 21st century oh coding is uh, i think it's very important for several reasons first it's uh, i like coding my, myself it's part of my background and you should check i have books about coding python in, in my house it's uh, it's very it's also a part of my job because i teach also coding to my students um, I think coding is very important because it helps us to to understand uh, to understand uh, machines. Uh, and during the twenty the, the beginning of twentieth century, machines were not like thinking; they were very uh, automatic machines. Now we have uh, more and more mach machines that have uh, a brain. I would say, uh, though I don't like this word for machine, but uh, lots of people who use this uh, these devices they just don't understand how it works and sometimes there are problems with them and they don't know what to do if you understand coding then you understand how the the, the device or the machine works and if you have a problem you um you can go around without always have to call somebody who is a specialist and uh, the more you know about uh coding the more you know about uh, machines and devices it's a little bit like before the area of electronics, when you you had uh, people who were very skilled uh, at uh, fixing uh, electronics or fixing even electricity or uh, or even uh, putting a nail in a, in a piece of wood. Uh, we uh, more or less were more or less losing this kind of skills, but we need uh, to gain some more skills um, that are more adapted uh, to uh, the 21st century. So I think coding is a very, very, very important to understand how machines can uh, think. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Guy Thanks. about you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Gayatri and I grew up from Jilla Parishat High School, Ailavaram. I'm so jubilant to interact with you. Here I would like to share a little information. The use of massive squares is illustrated for balancing out linear trend from main variable effects and lower order interactions. Here I would like to ask you a question. Can I ask, sir? Of course. Could Thank you me. please tell us more about your great work on magic squares? Okay. So, um, um, as a teacher, I uh, encountered some uh, exercises in uh, exercise books, uh, math exercise books. Some of them uh, use magic squares, and uh, I got uh, interested in them, um, mostly as a puzzle. I like puzzles. And um, 
and uh, the more I uh, learn about magic squares, um, I still find them kind of useless, but I find a kind of uh, beauty in them. And also, uh, I think they, they are a great uh, tool to teach uh, lots, lots of different things uh, to students. Um, first, vocabulary, like, you know, you have uh, lines, rows and columns and diagonal, and you can also teach symmetry because um, uh, magic squares can work both ways, uh, left and right, right and left, because it's about additions. And also, um, uh, you can teach uh, algorithm because making a big magic square needs to know uh, to you need to know a method otherwise otherwise knows, known in english as an algorithm so it's also good for coding because you can code uh, asking the computer to make a big magic square and well they, they have uh, lots of properties that i find uh, beautiful and uh, interesting in uh, in themselves so they can be a challenge they can be used in magic tricks i've seen some magic tricks on tv where people uh where the magician uses a magic square so uh, they, they are actually versatile and though the, in themselves they don't have a lot of mathematical mathematical value but studying them can uh, can give uh, a lot of skills and reveal a lot of uh, very in, uh, important and interesting things about mathematics. Yes, thank you. Uh, you you uh, and actually you studied the, the two education systems uh, of uh, two countries. One is your uh, motherland, France, and now you are staying in uh, South Korea. I think you might have studied their entire education system structure. So. Uh, what would you say about these two education systems? Do you think that they are compatible and at this 21st century to meet the global needs? Um, there, um, I think those two uh, systems are aiming uh, two different goals. Of course, to make people um, uh, educated, to give some skills to, to students, but uh, the approach is uh, very different. The, the the French education system is um, comes from um, I would say from the French Revolution, and uh, also uh, has lots of emphasis on um, on our our past as a. Uh, we were a long time ago uh, a leading country with lots of um, uh, thinkers. Uh, we still teach philosophy in uh, high school which is uh, kind of unique in the, in the world. I'm not sure lots of countries do that. So yes, and we do do that. And for the final exam in uh, high school, the what is called the baccalaureate, there is a test about philosophy. So this is a very, very special um, approach, which is not bad, I think, because it tries to open the, 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 the students' minds to lots of different subjects. But... Um, I would say that sometimes it uh, it loses a little bit focus on what it wants to teach and uh, how it wants the, the students to, to grow. Uh, the Korean system um, is a very, I would say is a very strict system um, because the, the, the uh, after the high school, the, the test is, uh, is very uh, important for the rest of your life. Um, in 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 Fr in France, once you are what is called the baccalaureate, once you uh, succeeded, passed the test after high school, then a lot of doors open just because you have a uh, baccalaureate. It is per law. Uh, you can do lots of things, even if you weren't quite a very good high school student. As long as you have the baccalaureate, then you can go to um, to more studies and lots of do doors open. Not all of them, but lots of them. In Korea, um, the test is a little bit more uh, like a contest. So um, the, your grade is very, very important for your acceptance in one or another university. And this will uh, determine the, the rest of your life, basically. So there's a lot of st more stress on the high school students in Korea than in uh, on uh, French high school stu students. I wouldn't say it's bad. I would say it's just it's a different system, and the students are the aim of the students is uh, very different in, in this regard. Yes. So thank you so much. And in learning math, in fact, uh, 
is, is learning math and teaching math is something. So when I was a, a school child, school student, I struggled a lot in learning the math. Probably uh, I was a bad student of math or maybe I had a bad teacher in the classroom. I don't know actually. But by the time I realized the fact that I was very poor in math, I still have my own uh, perception that yes, uh, had I had a good teacher like you in my childhood days at my school, probably I would have become an engineer or a mathematics teacher rather than English teacher. Still, the, the kind of feeling that I that, that, that prevails in my mind. So I many times I uh, feel like that. And, and so when you teach math to students and you know that uh, there are uh, many students in the classroom and their levels are different. One student is different from another student. So what kind of teaching strategies you usually employ in the classroom to meet the demands of all the students? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, that's a very good question. Uh, the the thing is, um, um, my approach. Uh, I have several approaches. Uh, the first one, of course, I um, I, I give the lesson, and then they have to learn the lesson, which they do more or less. You know, the students, and then I give exercises. And um, my my first approach is not to stay at my desk. But going around in the classroom, uh, because I've noticed that if you go around in the classroom, then students who are a little bit shy will ask you more questions than if you stay at your desk waiting for questions. So that's the first thing I, I do is just I, I walk a lot when I when I teach. The the second thing I do is uh, I check what they do. And I always try to have a very positive attitude on what they do. I never say, oh, this is wrong and everything. I say, oh, look at that. Uh, you missed this point and you can you can do this a little bit better or, okay, I'll explain you again. And uh, I try to explain also uh, uh, several different ways. Uh, in, um, in education, uh, it has been proven that uh, one explication sometimes not enough, a different one or teaching differently uh, the same thing can help another students. So I try to have various uh, different explanations for the same thing, several uh, different approaches for the same uh, concept, because some students will understand one con one way and some students will understand another way. And um, yes, I try to be always very positive. And if some students are very good, which... Uh, Fortunately, I have some very good students in my classes. Uh, I give them a little bit more uh, exercises or sometimes um, I give them a puzzle. Uh, I like to teach with a puzzle, which is not what I always do, but sometimes I like to give them puzzles and even sometimes puzzles uh, that we are, require um, much more like logical skill and then uh, mathematical skill um, because sometimes the... How can I say the the students who struggle sometimes they can find the, the answer whereas the, the the students who are very good won't find the answer so I like to use also puzzles in my in my class sporadically not a lot but uh, sometimes yeah there is a, uh, so still we have one more question Dutika are you still available for us so you broke up yes, a lot sir. yeah please Rutika go ahead please. good afternoon sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ritika, an 8th grader from JDH School, Alavaram. I am so privileged to interact with you. I would like to share a little information. Effective use of teaching strategies brings positive learning outcome in the students. They feel highly motivated to participate in teaching learning process. It promotes deep and long-lasting learning. In this context, I would like to ask you a question. My question is, what is your approach in teaching math? It looks like we have just an uh, answer to this question. Uh, uh, 
Okay, um, but I will, will answer uh, not to a teacher now, but to a student about my approach in teaching math, because uh, what I, my answer before was a little bit for, more for the teacher, and here we have a student. So um, when you have me as a teacher, uh, first you will always uh, see me smiling. I'm a very smiling person, and I think uh, it's important in the in a class to have um, somebody very positive because when you have a grumpy teacher you don't feel like studying so I'm always uh, trying to smile even if uh, sometimes my, my life is not uh, very positive and also um, as a as a teacher who teach uh, who teaches students who are not always um, very comfortable with French language I try to uh, keep their attention to their attentions with uh, with some kind of little jokes, uh, puns also of our French language uh, to keep their interest. Because when you miss a joke, you wake up and you look. What did he say? What did he say? You know, uh, next to your your friend, and also using some puns in French can also help them uh, develop their French speaking ability. So that's also one of. Uh, of uh, approach I do to the students. So if you have to ask the, my students, they will say that I'm always sm smiling and I try to be always smiling. Well, sometimes I, I get a little bit angry on some um, naughty students, but most of the times uh, I'm I'm smiling and I try to, to have a very positive attitude in class. Okay, thank you so much. And Magic trick I could do uh, like this. So um, I prepared. I prepared a little something with uh, some rubber bands. Can you see them? Yeah, yeah, we can see. So my my question is, uh, you have rubber bands, and when you do like this, first, uh, what what are rubber bands made of? That's great. And fine. So I'm going to take a rubber band, and I'm going to... <clears throat> Just a second. Okay. It's broken here. So my rubber band is broken. Now I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to show you like this. I'm going to fix it like that. I just do like this, rub it a little bit more. And now it's fixed. So students, and I know people don't believe me. <laughs> students, and I know people don't believe me. So I'm going to do this and show you that the rubber band is actually fixed. If you, if you think a little bit rationally, and if you, if you see that the reason result of my rubber band being broken is being fixed it may be because it's never been broken at first so mm -hmm. what happens here is that when I, I i show you the rubber band and i break it mm -hmm. maybe it's not broken I actually just pulled like this right right yes of course there's a little bit of manipulation to make it make you feel like i broke it mm -hmm. and which uh, i did off screen yeah but uh, the idea is this: I pretend to break. I pretend to break the rubber band. Actually, I'm, the rubber band is like this. I mm. pretend to break it. Yes. And of course, and of course, after I pretend to fix it back, and and uh, I like to keep my my here to pinch a little bit because people think that, uh, that I'm hiding yeah. something here, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. that gives a, a a little more effect. And that's why. So, of course, the, the rubber band has never been broken. Yeah. Thank Good to tell you that I was uh, very impressed uh, by your, by your first, by your interest, also by your uh, English level and um, uh, also by uh, your kindness. And uh, that was a great honor for me to, to be invited here. And uh, if you have uh, any question, ask your teacher and he's going to re relate to me. And uh, thank you. Thank you all of you for this uh, great time. I, uh, sp I had the, the, the pleasure to spend with you. Thank you so much. And before we wind up this session, I request you to give a few tips to my students to learn mathematics. Oh, <laughs> few tips. Um, practice. Lots of uh, what you do in mathematics requires just to practice, you know, algebra, you know, uh, with the when you work with the numbers and everything, just lots of it is practice. When you once you're comfortable with practice, then uh, you're going to see that theory is uh, is getting easier to understand. 
practice a lot. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Yeah. I, I would okay. say a little bit like a, a musician who has to do uh, uh, lots of practice, uh, you know, uh, not always playing music with his friends, but so always, always exercise and practice. Or somebody who plays football is not going to be uh, always doing uh, uh, football matches, but it's going to have to learn how to run, how to kick a ball again and again and again. It's not fun always, but uh, it's necessary. So it's uh, very important to have good practice. Thank you so 